Thank you for 2,000 subscribers. My gift to you is a voice reveal in three, two, one. During World War II, there are many types of drugs and equipment. In my last video on this topic, I talked about sulfur powder, ampules, morphine, and plasma. I will be discussing plasma in this video again too, because I found some cool ways plasma was used. Anyways, in today's video, I'll be discussing blue 88s, penicillin, iodine, elixir of terpene hydrate with codeine, and my new plasma info. Starting off, we have blue 88s, named after the German dual purpose 88 millimeter gun, or otherwise known as sodium amytal. This drug was used in field hospitals and psych wards off the line and in the land of the big PX, which is the United States, to treat comp exhaustion, otherwise known as PTSD. Blue 88s were developed because combat exhaustion became a prominent problem during the North African campaign, where the large numbers of men were evacuated because of neuropsychotic diseases and sent to hospitals in the rear. Treating these men became difficult due to the chronic nature of PTSD, and only a small percentage of these men could be sent back to the front. After a while, the old process the medical corps had was reevaluated, where they decided that being scared or fearful during combat was completely normal. I 100% agree with that assessment due to the fact that modern conflict, even today in the year 2025, is incredibly scary. And with the new drones and all that stuff being advanced in the Ukraine conflict um, is a great testament to how conflict has evolved. The medical department during World War II, obviously, also found how to identify signs of combat exhaustion, which is anxiety, tremors, headaches, nausea, and etc. And the only people who were evacuated were people who couldn't function anymore due to this trauma. Due to these reevaluations, the number of men returning to the line increased drastically. And if some were evacuated, they were treated in earshot of gunfire and were believed that this helped in the coping process. But Blue 88s were not all sunshine and rainbows because the drug was highly addictive and is a depressant and caused men to become a shell of themselves. Now, in an airing from 1994 from PBS, they discussed how Blue 88s caused men to become shells of themselves and coining the term ragman. Finally, if tr treatment did not work, the men would be placed in a supporting role off the line helping the field hospital. Between June of 1944 and VE Day, some 175,000 GIs were taken to hospitals in the European theater due to disease, and only 314 died from the infections. These numbers were incredibly low because of the antibiotics used by the army. It was not only cured infections and even prevented it from the battle-borne injuries. During the length of the conflict, there were two types of antibiotics, sulfa, which I have previously discussed, and penicillin, which I'll be discussing today. I've talked about sulfa before, as previously stated in my first video in the series. I'll put a link in the description. Side note, I actually discovered sulfa has a different packaging based on medics and your Carlisle bandage. I'll, po I'll put a picture on the screen where the medics have this like cardboard sleeve looking thing with the sulfamidified packet uh, label put on it. And the medics have, the me not medics, the non-medics have like the normal, like just paper packaging. Back on topic, penicillin was discovered in 1921 when Alexander Fleming had the common cold. He placed his mucus in a petri dishes and watched them closely. The petri dish that had penicillin molded and bacteria wouldn't grow on the mold. The next steps for penicillin were with researchers at Oxford University when they had major breakthroughs starting in 1939, and to my knowledge, continued this research until the end of the war. But in January of 1941, the first human test would be done. Development for the British at Oxford was cut off by the Americans because of the attacks on December 7th, where all the penicillin produced would be sent to the American Armed Services. Jumping forward a short amount of time, Pizer, a drone company, bought an old ice producing factory and repurposed it to make penicillin. And by the time of the Normandy invasion, 300 billion units of penicillin were on standby. Pizer's numbers for production did not stop there. For 1944, there were 1,633 billion units, and for 1945, a total of 7,952 billion units of penicillin were produced. By January of 1944, 
28 general hospitals were studying the use of penicillin in surgical infections. 16 centers were simultaneously studying its use in self-aminified resistant gonorrhea patients. Using penicillin not only cured more of the men than previous treatments, but it also dramatically reduced the time it took to have them ready and to return to duty. Within months, the use of penicillin became far more widespread as the available supplies increased. In the first months of the campaigns in the ETO, penicillin was only used by hospitals. But penicillin, to my knowledge, was rarely used on the front lines even after the first months of the ETO campaign. And sulfur powder was much more common. If anyone has information to disprove that, please send it my way. Now, iodine in the Second World War doesn't get all the love I feel it should have gotten. No one talks about this drug at all, but iodine saw service all over the place as a disinfectant and a way to prep the skin for injections like morphine. Iodine was even packed with morphine in some cases for ease of access, but the history of iodine dates back to 1811, towards the end of the Napoleonic Wars. The French army was in dire need of gunpowder, and the French chemist Bernard Curtis was experimenting with, with using seaweed as an alternative way of processing gunpowder when he made an amazing discovery. He added too much acid to the suspension of seaweed ash, which produced a violet-colored vapor. After the vapor had condensed into crystals, Cordes analyzed them and gave them to a fellow chemist, Joseph Louis Gay Lusick, for further study. Two years later, Gay Lusick presented his study to the scientific community, announcing the discovery of a new element he named iodine after the Greek word iodes, meaning violet-colored. While he acknowledged Cordes as the original discoverer of the element, Gay Lusick was the first to recognize iodine as a totally new substance. Iodine was later used in the Civil War by Confederate General John B. Gordon at the Battle of Amsterdam on September 17, 1862. Gordon had been wounded five times when he developed a bacterial infection in the upper layer of his skin on his left arm. The doctors told his wife to paint the arm three to four times a day with iodine. Gordon's wife followed the doctor's instruction by applying the iodine. Gordon later said that the treatment not only saved his arm, but saved his life as well. By 1890, there were 30 different medications derived from iodine. Ten years later, iodine was well established as an antiseptic in the medical and surgical practice. By 1928, there were 128 listed iodine items. Now for a second to last drug, turpin hydrate with codeine was a common cough medicine from the 1880s to the 1990s. Turpin is used to loosen mucus in the patient's bronchitis and related conditions. It is normally used as turpin hydrate or turpin H2O. Turpin hydrate is a respiratory tract medicine used to treat acute and chronic bronchitis, ammonia, and infections and inflammatory diseases in the upper respiratory tract. It is typically mixed with cold medicines such as coedine as a combined substance. From an account from the 44th Infantry Division medic, he states, quote, as a medic aidman on the front line, I always carried a, in my medical bags an ample supply of ETH with C, elixir with turpin hydrate with codeine, a very good cough suppressant. Coughing on the front line was dangerous as the enemy could find you more easily. Now, codeine was used in aid stations, but in a later video, I'll discuss the different styles of codeine. I discussed this drug in a previous video on this topic, but bottled plasma was a blessing on the battlefield, making plasma much more portable and accessible for every soldier. A discovery I made was that the army used plasma for shock prevention. For a tiny little bit of background, shock is a life-threatening condition caused by failure of blood circulation, causing inaccurate oxygen delivery to the tissues and cells of the body. The effects of shock are initially reversible, but rapidly can, can become fatal, resulting in multi-organ failure and death. Wound-based shock, or quote, failure of blood circulation, is due to blood and plasma loss, and the army, because of the lack of understanding of shock, decided that plasma would be the best way to treat blood loss. Logistically, because of plasma developments, i.e. universal and free dried plasma, was an easier process due to it being able to go with any blood type and transported without spoiling. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I'm ever grateful of my 2,000 subscribers. This video was originally for my 1,000 subscriber special, but hey, I'm at 2,000 subscribers now. Thank you for watching and Tell me what you think I can improve on with the whole voiceover thing in the future. Thank you.